Hi guys, how you doing? Well, this is a follow-up video to the last one, as it is five minutes to eight at night, and I watched uh, the five with Greg Gutfeld and Jesse Waters and Juan Williams, you know, and um, you know, even though Juan Williams drives me crazy and frustrated. Um, I think he's there as a counterbalance, you know, as if to say, this is what your liberal friends will say, and this is how you respond to it, because you'll see Greg and Jesse, you know, um, Don, or whoever else might be here, um, to argue, um, their their point. So anyway, and I got a little bit more educated about um, what really happened. Okay. Now, originally I was under the impression based on what they said, which is pretty much my point on another video where um, um, oh, I can't think of it. <laughs> oh, sucks getting old. Um, oh, if I think about it, 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 if it comes to me, I will interrupt what I'm run saying. Um, just want to make sure there's no paper on my hair. I saw that as a Oh my God, this paper on my hair. Okay. Um, I was under one impression. And based on what the main, the main media, mainstream media reports or says, and you follow that narrative, and you realize that what you're being told is not the truth. Okay. It has to do with the charge that President Trump was about to fire Mueller. Okay. And so they presented it in such a way of this is how he's obstructing justice by stopping the investigation. And I learned and I think I got this right and please um you guys who, you know, uh, have seen, you know, um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, okay. What Trump was thinking was not stopping the investigation. He wasn't talking about stopping the investigation. He was talking about replacing Robert Mueller was somebody else who would be more fair-minded. Okay. He, President Trump, or maybe there was a, a conflict of interest. I'm not exactly sure why President Trump wanted to keep the investigation going but replace Mueller with somebody else who either would be more unbiased about it or conflict of interest or for some other reason. Could be that, you know, of his health. I don't know. I don't know. It's, you know, it's... So, President Trump wasn't trying to stop the investigation. He was trying to replace Mueller with somebody else to take over. Just like William Barr was replaced was replacing Jeff Sessions. Okay. And um, so that's that's one thing I wanted to uh, say that I learned from watching the five. And um, and another thing, and I 
didn't see it because I turned it off. But they showed that Muller was um, intimidated by that congressman who probably, like, treated him the way my uh, sister used to, and uh, which they used to do in, in the olden days in uh, police stations, where they drill you, and they drill you, and they torture you with eh, to the point where you say anything just to make them stop. And you go, yes, 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 I admit it, I admit it. Please leave me alone. Yes, whatever you say, yes. Ah, okay, you got it. He admitted it. That's admissible because he said it. But they don't say that you tortured the man to the extent that you would stop if he said it. I mean, you know. Because then, he later came back, Mueller that is, and said, I want to correct a statement that I made because I think I misunderstood the question about um, not uh, charging President Trump because of the um, injunction saying you cannot charge a city president. But once he leaves office, you can charge him. And that was my intent of what I said in the report. I want to clarify that and correct it. I came to this conclusion because of insufficient evidence to charge him, having nothing to do with um, you can't indict a sitting president. As you were saying on the vibe that before the break, before the lunch break, I guess it was, um, that the Democrats were salivating and their mouths were... <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, we got him now, we got him now, we got him now. Oh, yeah. And then Mueller turns around and says... It has nothing to do with the fact that you can't indict a sitting president. It's because we had insufficient evidence to charge him. And the Democrats are like, It's the end of the world. The sky is falling. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh, this is a travesty. Oh, what a travesty. And of course, the drama queens and the drama kings and the drama people in the Democrat Party are like, oh no, what are we going to do now? Oh, we can't get rid of him. We can't get him into trouble. We can't. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Oh. Help us, help us. Help us, Nika Pelosi. Guide us. You know, almost, it almost reminds me of that um, Star Trek episode. I believe it was The Return of the Archon. And the uh, people were programmed by a machine. And then when Kirk and his crew were able to make the machine go crazy with, you know, logic that contradicted what his programming was, and the computer was short-circuiting, and there was smoke and sparks and everything else. And then everybody started coming. Oh, guide us, guide us. Oh, please guide us. We're lost, we're lost. Please guide us. You know, help us. We need guidance. And that's what it reminded me of. 
when the Democrats were salivating over the thought that we nailed Trump, we nailed, we nailed him for obstruction. And now we're going to pursue this when he leaves office, which will be about a year and a half from now. And then Mueller turns around and says, um, that was, that wasn't true. I realized what I said. That isn't why I couldn't bring around any indictments. It has nothing to do with the care of the United president. It's because it was insufficient evidence. That was like a, that was like a, a wooden stake through their heart. So anyway, I thought that was pretty telling. <coughs> and uh, that I was pretty much on the right, you know, when I said that they're going to, um, and, and about having um, media reporting as credible source. <laughs> Man, that still gets me. You know, oh, and, and another thing, it wasn't Comey. It wasn't Comey, it was um, Trump's uh, Cohen. Cohen. That's who the compulsive liar was. Trump's former uh, lawyer, Cohen. He was the compulsive liar. He lied over, and so was Hillary. She was a liar too. She she told so many lies, um, and 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 that's really why, um, that's really why I voted for Trump. Not because I believe that, you know, he was the best person for the job. It's just because I didn't want Hillary. I just didn't want Hillary. And like I said in an earlier video, that when it came time to voting for Trump or Hillary, and I voted for Trump because from what I heard about President Trump from mainstream media of how bad and evil he is, that I said, I hope I'm doing the right thing by voting for Trump, but I don't want Hillary. She's a compulsive liar, you know. I really didn't know any of the crimes that she did, like Benghazi. I still don't know what happened in Benghazi. And the only thing that I can uh, make sense of about Benghazi was that four American soldiers were killed by a screw-up over there in Benghazi. But I'll tell you what I do remember. I do remember the Fast and Furious debacle. I remember that. And that a border agency, now I know who the border agents are. I don't know who the border agents were. They never covered it. They never covered it. I had no idea what was going on at the border. You know, because they... The, it was never talked about. Now that I watch Fox News, now I see what they're talking about. I see about the border. I, I heard from many, many border agents. So I was thinking, is that an agent that was killed by our own weapon, by somebody that went into... Mexico without serial numbers or anything and that he ends up getting killed by our own weapon that was passed on through the Fast and Furious thing I said holy boy wow I had no idea you know so when Obama was president um, 
I still didn't like him. I definitely didn't like Hillary, you know. And, um, but lies, lies, compulsive liars. Now, if you lie once, your credibility is shot. And if you end up being a compulsive liar or a career liar, like a career criminal, you know, and um, a lie, I mean, I just, um, I guess I thought, I guess I lost my train of thought. He left the station about an hour ago. Um, but he didn't have a caboose, that I'll tell you. He had a coal car, but because it has to, you have to keep the fire going, you know. <laughs> you know. Anyway. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's what I want to say. I just wanted to correct a few things, you know, um, from what I learned. And from what I remembered. Um, and that's pretty much it. So, um, and I watched the Democrat response and there's, there, I'll buy, tell you, they're, they're in, uh, it's, they're in a bubble. Pelosi and Schumer wasn't there, which I'm glad because I don't like Schumer. I don't like Pelosi either. You know, she hears crickets all the time. But that's okay. But, um, but, Schiff and Nadler, ugh, they're a piece of work. Anyway, um, So, not having watched the rest of it, I'm kind of glad I didn't. They watched it for me, and they yanked out of the whole thing that Mueller was not prepared, um, that it's possible he's the ghost writer, or there was a ghost writer for his report because he did not know what was in it. It reminds me of during the Kavanaugh hearings and uh, that poor woman um, when asked about something that was written, she says, okay, hold on, let me read what I wrote. <laughs> you wrote it, you submitted it, and you don't remember what you said? You know, yeah, let me let me read what I wrote to refresh my memory. Uh, it wasn't that long ago, you know. Oh, but anyway, so that's what I really that's what I want to talk about, and uh, that Mueller basically said. It has nothing to do with the fact that you can't indict a sitting president. It's just that we found insufficient evidence to charge him. I can't exonerate him. Now, Trump said he was exonerated. And oh, 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 oh. Now I remember something that I was going to say. That one, okay, that Trump lied after the Mueller came, report came out by saying that he was exonerated. Now, the report doesn't say exonerated because there's a thing called reasonable doubt. You don't declare a man guilty until proven innocent. All you got to do is provide, uh, 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 entice reasonable doubt. 
because as Juror 8 said, who is played by Henry Fonda in 12 Other Men, a jury cannot declare a man guilty or woman unless it is sure and absolute beyond a reasonable doubt. If there's any doubt, and even the judge said that, if there's any doubt in your mind, then you have to declare not guilty because of that doubt. You know. And if there's insufficient evidence to prove the crime, then the verdict has to be not guilty because of insufficient evidence. You don't prove a man is innocent, you disprove the charge. That's really what you do. And those people on the left, Pelosi and all those people, everybody on the left just loses that. They've lost that fact in their minds that you don't declare a person is innocent, you disprove the charge. You disprove the charge. You disprove the charge by um, presenting reasonable doubt or enticing. Uh, enticing is not the right word, but I think you know what I mean. That you have to disprove with doubt in mind. I think that's the best way to put it, you know. Um, you know what? I'm not sure. I'm not sure you did it. I can't say that you absolutely did not do it. I'm just not sure. So I can't exonerate you. See, exonerate is a very subjective word. Okay, President, when President Trump says he's exonerated, okay, he means he was found not guilty because of doubt. Not that he didn't do it, but because there was insufficient evidence to prove that he did it. It's like there's evidence you didn't do it because you had an alibi. Or there's evidence, there's proof you didn't do it because of an alibi. Or there's proof you didn't do it because of this, this, and this. That's what the Democrats are defining exoneration to mean. But exoneration means being absolved of guilt. Okay being absolved of guilt with doubt. Because that's all you need to exonerate somebody. That he's exonerated because you have put doubt in there. There's now reasonable doubt. And that is what uh, results in the term exoneration. So, all the Democrats and those on the left and the liberals just don't know what exoneration really means. Exoneration they define as proof that and absolutely he didn't. Okay. But exonerate means that it hasn't been proven, or it can't be proven. So, if there's doubt one way or the other, that we don't know that he didn't do it, but we're also not sure we did it, that's exoneration. So all you need for exoneration is doubt. That's all you need. And they keep saying, oh, he lied, he lied, he lied. 
he lied because he did they didn't say he was exonerated. So he keeps saying he's exonerated. So Mr. President is lying again. <laughs> You know. Oh boy. Oh, now I know what I'm going to say. Okay. Let me let me say it before we get it again. Um. Okay. They were saying that about collusion, right? Okay. They were saying, it, the, the Democrats, I think Schiff or Nadler or whatever, one of those were saying at the press conference just short of a minute ago, that there's absolute proof he, that President Trump colluded with the Russian government, and as soon as he was elected, he tried to cover it up. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know what he meant by that Trump was trying to cover up the crime of receiving help by the Russians by denying it. I was like, do you, I mean, so it's like, they're quick with this narrative. They're quick with this narrative about that President Trump colluded, got the Russians help. The Russians were helping, yeah. The Russians were influencing the election for Hillary, not for Trump. They, 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 either they're stupid or they're playing games. Because I know, and most of my contemporaries know, that President Trump did not collude with the Russian government. The Russian government may in fact have a hand in, in, in uh, influencing the election so that Hillary could win. But, and they were trying to get dirt on Trump so that Hillary could use against the Trump team. Not that President Trump was getting help by the Russians. It, it's, it's, and then after he got the help, this is their narrative now. This is their narrative. Okay. They're saying that President Trump got help by the Russian government, and after he was elected, he tried to cover it up by denying that he did. I says, yeah, he denied that he did because he didn't do it. You know, you're telling stories out of thin air. You're falsely accusing him of doing something he wasn't doing. Wouldn't any normal person deny being involved in such a such a uh, situation? And they're saying that's called a cover up by denying it ever happened. So, the liberals have all this fantasy stuff going on. A James Bond narrative they got going on. It's like, you've been watching too many James Bond movies or something. You got all these crazy conspiracy theories and they accuse us of being conspiracy. You know. Ugh. But that was what I was trying to say. That's what I wanted to say. I couldn't remember. Was that they mentioned their narrative about President Trump colluding with Russians, and then when he won the election, he pretended that he didn't do it, or he pretended that uh, he did, and that's his cover-up. And that is the lie that they've been feeding American citizens, particularly those on the left, 
particularly people who I used to consider very close friends. But now because of this, one has decided, two, uh, three people have decided to not be friends with me anymore. Uh, and you know, politics like that happen on the job too. It happened when I was working at my dad's studio. Politics. Dirty politics. Dirty politics brought about by scandals. And some scandals or anything to bring me down. Like we were trying to bring President Trump down. Hey, when I was delivering newspapers, and um, this was my first exposure to this kind of dirty political tactics, okay? And I was delivering in a house where a doctor lived. And they insisted that I bring the newspaper and put it between the outer screen door and the front door. So this way, they could just open the front door, the paper will be inside. So in case it rains, the paper won't get wet, and they won't have to work, uh, walk far, right? So I had to try to get off my bike. I parked the bike in the driveway, I walked up the walk, opened the outside door, put the newspaper and closed the gate, uh, the outer door. Walked over to my bike, got on, rode up to my next customer. Well, one day, um, it was a nice day in fact, and I did exactly what I did every day. Got off my bike. Walked up the walk, opened the outer door, the screen door, put the paper in between, closed the screen door, and went over to my bike. But as I was walking over to my bike, I heard a dog barking. And it sounded like the dog was in the garage. And the dog was barking and barking and barking and barking. And it scared me at first because... That dog, I never heard dog barking yet before. So I was getting on my bike, and I was just off the driveway and back onto the street when I heard this loud crash behind me. It scared me. So I got off my bike and turned, and I saw that a window in the garage door was broken. So I thought, oh wow, the dog must have tried to jump through that garage door window. And I didn't think anything of it until, um, <clears throat> I think until it was time to uh, bring our monies to Mr. Grassi. And so, I um, um, do my uh, I uh, present my my money and the receipts and everything. And Joe Grassi said to me, uh, "Was there an incident on such and such a road with Doctor So and So?" Um, I said. Well, I know that their dog jumped through, tried to jump through the window and broke the window. And he asked me what happened. And I told him exactly what happened. And he said, Well, the lady is charging 
that you teased the dog and tormented the dog and made him jump through the window. I said, what? How could I tease the dog? The dog was in the house. And why would I do that anyway? You know. And Joe Grassi said to me, well, they're, they have notified us and they said that we, or basically, yeah, the paper, will pay for repairs to the window and the vet bill. Um, and I said, I want to fight this. I want to fight this because I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I did nothing. All I did was deliver the paper out of my bike and ready to leave. And he said to me, do you have any witnesses? I said, no. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. This is so unfair. I didn't do anything. Do you want to fight it? Heck, yeah, I want to fight it. Okay, he said. We'll fight it. And... He says to me, I don't, I, I don't, it doesn't look good because you have no witnesses. If you had a witness with you, you know, who could, you know, confirm what you're saying, that you did not tease the dog, you know, then we have a, uh, a good chance. So, we ended up losing. And um, they got free newspapers until, um, you know, until it reached the amount for repairs and a vet bill. But that was, and I was a teenager then. I was a teenager then. And I got a little dose of some of the sneaky dirty politics that people can play. And damn right. <laughs> so, um, and then about two more times in the working world, I was, I was a victim of dirty politics. of being accused of something I didn't do. They could also say I'm covering up the crime by denying it never happened. Just like Trump is denying he never colluded with the Russians. That's how he's covering it up. Just like I was covering up my crimes by denying it never happened. And that's really all you all you all you gotta do is charge somebody with a crime. Huh? Yeah, I know. Charge somebody with a crime and then when they deny it, you could accuse them of covering up the crime. That's the dirty tactics of people on the left. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, BJ, you uh, want to be vocal today, huh? Uh -huh. Oh, that's okay, BJ. Um, how was your hibernation? Oh, okay, now he's quiet. <laughs> oh, you're a little bit shy, BJ, huh? Okay, that's okay. <laughs> anyway, I um, hope you... Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Yeah, BJ's quiet now. <laughs> Um, the little camera side, BJ? Yep, I guess he is. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And uh, I'll see you soon. So, uh, um, I think we can put this to rest now. This whole business. And I'll have more fun, more fun things to talk about. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And take care. I'll see you soon.